Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to speak with you today about mammograms and breast studies. I recently had my own experience which uh, prompted me to do this video and that is that personally I have never had a mammogram. I get breast ultrasounds instead. I strongly believe that using radiation on breast tissue is something that in the future I think we're going to come to uh, regret that we did because breast tissue is, and this is not arguable, it's very sensitive to radiation. And certainly the younger you are, the more sensitive it is. I'm going to be citing a lot of different studies, so I have my handy little pad here that I'm going to be looking at because there's a lot of information. Uh, but my personal story is um, it was, it was that time, so I went and, and uh, had a breast ultrasound. I was given a very hard time from the, the clinic that uh, does mammograms and ultrasounds. If you haven't had this experience very frequently, if you get a positive mammogram and they're suspicious about something, you'll get a repeat mammogram, but usually the final analysis comes from a breast ultrasound where they'll hone in on the, that specific area and kind of then decide from there if you're going to go forward and get a biopsy or, or, or what. Uh, but usually the ultrasound is the, the final analysis, so I kind of jump to that, which I'll talk a little bit more about, but uh, needless to say, uh, they gave me a very hard time, which they always have. This time was worse <laughs> than others, um, but uh, the particular doctor that evaluated my ultrasound uh, said it looked fine and then was very quick to say, you know, that doesn't tell me much because you're not doing a mammogram, and I strongly disagree with that, and uh, radiation is not dangerous, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, they ended up sending me a letter, erroneously, uh, that said they had found something on my study and I needed more studies, which didn't quite add up because the doctor had said the ultrasound was fine, uh, only to find out that they really, they sent that letter because they wanted me to do a mammogram. Uh, but the letter very distinctly said they found something. So I, I felt for the person that would have received that letter who wasn't a clinician like myself and and the amount of upset and stress that could be associated with that until the clerical error uh, was remedied would, uh, you know, could be very significant for somebody. And anyway, so that was my story, which prompted me to uh, want to look into really the latest research on mammograms and really give you the straight skinny, as it were, on the facts about them. So let's look at some of these. As I mentioned, uh, the breast tissue is highly sensitive to radiation, so we know that. There was a Swedish study done on 60,000 women, so this was a large study, and it found that for those women who were told they had a tumor on their mammogram, 70 percent of those tumors were fine. So. Uh, but in order to find out they were fine, the woman had to go through not just the stress and worry of it all, but then a biopsy, an invasive procedure where a needle is inserted into the breast to find out that the tumor was benign. So the, the, the bottom line here is that mammograms are absolutely known to have a lot of false positives. You're told there's a problem and 70 to 80 percent of the time, another study uh, showed that 70 to 80 percent of the time with a positive mammogram there's no cancer after biopsy. So between 70 and 80 percent of the time you're getting a false positive. That's a high percentage. Um, however, there's a flip side, which are the false negatives, missing cancer that's actually there. And the National Cancer Institute, they should know what they're talking about, especially women ages 40 to 50, uh, they estimate that 40% of cancers that are actually there are missed on mammograms. So this idea that it's a great detection tool is really not borne out um, by research. On top of that, you have, if you've ever experienced a mammogram, I have not, but I've certainly talked to enough patients who have, uh, the breast tissue is, is very firmly and forcibly compressed uh, in order to get uh, the image that is required. So not only the radiation, but there's forceful compression. And there's many people who believe that um, this forceful compression could actually rupture blood cells around uh, some cancer cells and allow those cancer cells to then spread through through the system. 
It's also believed that in a healthy body, cancer cells are, are produced every single day in our bodies, but a healthy immune system destroys them. There's also some, some thought that uh, cancer could be existing, but, but successfully walled off um, because the body is healthy and just not allowed to infiltrate or expand. And such compression of the breast tissue could actually release those cancer cells. So that's the um, concern there on the compression. If you're a woman under the age of 35, mammograms are estimated to cause 75 cases of cancer for every 15 it detects. So definitely not a good idea if you're under the age of 35, perhaps under the age of 40. This particular study was under the age of 35. And if you're under 50, 55, uh, your breast tissue is, is more sensitive. They apparently over the age of 55, the tissue is less sensitive to radiation than when you're younger than that, but especially th the younger you are, the more sensitive to you are is really the moral of that story. Um, there was a Canadian study that showed that mammograms had no positive effect on mortality, meaning whether you had them or you didn't have them, well, let me put it another way because there's a, there's a secondary point here. They found that there was no benefit as far as living to having a mammogram. In fact, they found that if you were between the ages of 40 and 50, you were more likely to die of breast cancer if you had regular screenings. So if you were being a good girl and following the recommendation of every single year over the age of 40 having a mammogram, you were more likely to die from breast cancer than women who were not being good girls in doing regular screenings. Uh, the American Cancer Society once again agrees that there's, there's not a positive effect on mortality by doing mammograms. So this is not my opinion, okay? I'm not making this up. This is all research-based. So what are, what are some of our options? Um, ultrasound is an option. Thermography is, a, is another very nice option. Thermography is not radiation. It's, um, there's no compression of the breasts. You actually stand several feet from a machine that measures the heat of the tissue. So the idea here is that um, cancer cells, areas of um, tumors are hotter because they're having more um, reproduction. So it's, it's, it's a heat type of thing. You're in a room that's fairly cool, very dark, and they take this image and you see color. If you Google it, you can see what these thermographs look like. You'll see uh, cool and hot places, hopefully not a hot place because that means there's a problem. Um, but it's estimated that thermography detects cancer 10 years before uh, a mammogram or a breast exam would ever detect it. The good news there, obviously, is that really that's what we want. We want early detection. Mammograms don't do that but thermography actually does. So uh, I recently wrote a blog, so you can go to my website, uh, healthnowmedical.com, under my clinical nutrition blog, and um, look for this. I just put it up yesterday, actually. And I list some, some uh, points that you want to look for when you're scheduling a thermography. The downside of thermography is not covered by insurance, so you're paying out of pocket for it. But the upside is no radiation, no compression, early detection, so definitely some benefits there. Um, so what does all this mean? I think it's very important that as women we have tools. And I personally think mammogram is not a good tool. I think that the thermography is, uh, breast ultrasound can definitely be and also getting healthy. So women who are obese are more uh, likely to get breast cancer. Women who have hormonal imbalance, a high rate of estrogen, and there's sort of the good estrogen and the bad estrogen, we can find that on blood tests. Uh, so hormonal imbalance has a lot to do with it. Uh, toxic load has a lot to do with it. There's a lot you can do to prevent cancer. It's not that that thing that just sort of descends upon you because you're, you're unlucky. And, and the same doctor who ended up sending me this letter telling me I had a problem when I didn't, um, we got into a little bit of an argument about that. And he said, listen, he goes, at your age, your rate is one out of 11. That's the statistic. He goes, if you're unlucky, there you go. You're one out of 11 chance of having breast cancer. And I said, you know, I think it has more to do uh, with 
lifestyle and diet and how you take care of your body than it does to do with luck. And he goes, yeah, I don't find that. So, you know, you couldn't probably find more disparate views about health than this gentleman and myself, but there you go. Um, I think I'm right. Uh, I have a lot of documentation to support that, uh, but the, the truth of the matter is we can do a lot to prevent cancer and, and, and manage uh, a body who's, who's already in, in that, um, going in that direction. We know this to be true. There's a lot of research to support that. So that might be um, for another talk, but I did want to talk to you today about the mammograms and, and your options on that so that you were uh, informed. So until next time, uh, I wish you very good health and please send me your questions and comments. I always do love to hear from you.